Women's running, running, running. Women's running stories. Hey, I'm Emma Grace Hurley. I run for Atlanta Track Club Elite. So I live in Atlanta and I was fortunate enough to grow up in Atlanta too. So being on this team is just a really natural transition for me. I mean, my coach and I had talked about it and we looked at it and we're like, wow, like this is a great group of women. Um, but we had decided before the race, I had said to her the night before, I was like, I could get second. I could get 10th and I wouldn't be surprised with either result, but I wanted to go for it and run for second and see how that worked out. So that was kind of where my head was at. I mean, you know, we knew Emily was going to run away with it. That was obvious. And I have so much respect for all of the women who were in that race. They're all very accomplished runners, but yeah, we had just decided let's go for it and see what happens. And that's what we are here to cover. What happened at the 2023 USATF 15-kilometer national championships that took place Saturday, March 4th in Jacksonville, Florida at the Gate River Run? Hello and welcome to Women's Running Stories. I am Sheree Louise Turner. I am your host and producer, and we are a proud member of the Evergreen Podcast Network. In this race report, we are checking in with Emma Grace Hurley, a young pro who is relatively new to the longer distance road racing scene and had a breakout day last Saturday when she went up against a tough field of women, which included none other than Emily Sisson. Emily is the current American record holder in the half marathon and the marathon. To say she's having a moment would be an understatement. And it wasn't just Emma Grace and her coach who thought that Emily was going to run away with the win. It was pretty much on everybody's mind. And while this was the first time that Emma Grace had ever towed the line with Sisson, it was not the first time these two had ever met. I had actually spoken to her a little bit before a race in high school when I was um, a footlocker finalist in San Diego. She was my team's captain. And so she's someone that I've looked up to literally since high school. And I mean, she was one of the first people that I knew was a pro runner. I didn't know that much about running in high school. I didn't go to a school with like a big program or anything. Like it was a lot of times just like me and my dad at a meet. And so she was just one of my like first introductions to what pro running was. And so I've looked up to her for so long. I feel like those are the people like the people you meet when you're 16 or 17 and, you know, just figuring out your own way in the sport. Like, that's just so formative. So it was almost like a full circle moment to then, like, be raising her. But yeah, so that was a really cool moment. That cool moment and life as a pro had not, however, been part of Emma Grace's plans after a collegiate career where she just didn't really shine the way that she thought she was going to. I think in college I came in and, you know, like every girl does, they just hit that time where their body's changing. And I had kind of hit like a wave of that just before college and just almost struggled the whole time to kind of get that together in my mind. Cause I just didn't come in and have like the freshman season that I thought I was going to have, um, especially having had a really successful high school career. So I don't know, like, I feel like I just, didn't think that I could do it. And it wasn't that I wasn't surrounded by good people. I just didn't live up to my own expectations and could never get over that. And then after college, I took a break and just went into the professional world, worked. And then I started coaching at a high school and the head coach is, I just have so much respect for him. His name's Matt McMurray. And he just told me, he was like, Hey, I, I think you're not done. Like, let's figure this out. And just having someone who in my out of shape, couldn't break six minutes for a mile self was like, Hey, I believe in you. Like, I think you can do this. That was a game changer. And then when I came onto the track club and, you know, was running maybe at that point, just under 17 minutes for a road 5k and the coaches were like, no, I, I think you could be good. Like, I think you could do this. Yeah. So my coaches are Amy and Andrew Begley. Um, and then I got connected with them because I grew up in Atlanta and, 
someone who works at the track club with our team very closely. Um, he's the high performance director reached out to me and was basically like, how can I convince you to come run with us? I hear you're running again. And so that's kind of how I got connected with them. And then I had a phone call with Andrew Begley, um, who primarily coaches middle distance and it was just a natural fit. And so I came onto the team, um, in October of 2021 and was just very developmental and just kind of with their coaching and just the quality of teammates I have got to where I am now. You know, having people that I had confidence in saying, even if you don't see this in yourself, we see it in you, that was just, you know, almost to give back to them. I wanted to go for it and really try. And now it's gotten to a point where I'm like, I believe in myself too. When I first joined the team, we were doing a lot of local 5Ks kind of as just a way to get in a good workout because you're always going to run really hard in a race no matter where it is. So I just love doing local Atlanta, like they're fun um, and, you know, they're easy to get to. So that was kind of my first few weeks on the team and I just loved it. And then I really started getting into professional road racing at the Peachtree in Atlanta last year. That was actually my first ever 10K race. I'd only raced 6,000 meters in cross country before. That was the previous furthest I had gone um, and just really surprised myself with a good result there. And then ran the 10K road champs in Northport, New York at Cow Harbor, placed fifth there. Again, really surprised myself. And then the furthest I went was the 10 mile road championships at Twin Cities last believe that was still in September. Oh, it was October 2nd. Just kidding. It was in October. I mean, I think a lot of what I learned last fall was that I just want to go into races and not be afraid of it and not be afraid of the pace and just put myself in it and see what happens. At the Peachtree, I had gone out and just kind of let people go from the beginning and I ran really well. But I kind of walked away from that, wondering what would have happened had I put myself in it earlier. And then with the 10K and the 10 mile, I just learned that obviously there's an amount to, it's a long way to go. Like you don't want to burn yourself too early, but you know, it's a balance of not wanting to be afraid of it and still being smart about where you are and what you can do. Emma Grace took those recent experiences and curiosity to see what would happen if she went for it into the 15K champs at Gate River. Yeah, so race day, I was rooming with one of my teammates, Joanna. She typically runs marathons, so this was a short day for her. And then I typically run 5Ks and 10Ks, so it was a long day for me. Um, So we just woke up, had our breakfast, got ready to go. And then honestly... It was one of those days where I wasn't quite feeling nervous. I was just so excited to get out there and see what I could do. I had just run indoor season. So I was actually racing 3Ks indoor. I was just excited to test my fitness over a shorter distance after being away from it for a year and seeing how that went. So honestly, I really surprised myself in how well I ran. I ran 8.51 the first week, then came back home to Atlanta, had a couple heavy weeks of training, and then um, ran 8.55 the second weekend. So it was a very short season. I only ran two races. I didn't attend um, indoor nationals to focus on Gate River Run. So I knew that I had some good fitness, and I was just really excited to see how that would translate to a longer race on the road. Um, So just good energy all around, I feel like. I was just so excited to be there and race. Coming in with that speed from her short indoor season and excited to test her fitness over the much longer distance of 15 kilometers, Emma Grace was ready to go. And she also was not phased by the less than ideal weather. So it was really humid. It had kind of It was kind of like drizzling, I want to say, like as we were waking up, walking out to the buses, and then it poured down rain right after the race ended. So we had that middle part where it was just so muggy, which I personally, you know, it's not my favorite weather in the world, but I'm in a race scenario. I kind of like it because we live and train in Atlanta. I had just come back from Florida for a month with our middle distance team. 
And so the weather was typical Florida, mid 70s, 80, 90% humidity. I mean, it was not pleasant for anyone. Hear Her Sports is a podcast for everyone who loves stories by and about women striving to improve and make a difference in their lives. I am your host, Elizabeth Emery, a former professional cyclist. In every episode, I introduce a female athlete or woman in the business of sport through a thoughtful conversation about who they are and the terrific work they're doing. My guests and I explore the glorious and frustrating issues in sports, history, equity, training, nutrition, and so much more. Join us for inspiration, for community, and for love of being a strong athletic woman. At peace with the unpleasantness of that heat and humidity, Emma Grace focused on the immediate task at hand. It was go time. So first, I think I should say that in indoor 3Ks, I was having a horrible time getting off the line. Like, I feel like I would get off the line and immediately just be in last and have to work my way up because that like sharp, sharp speed is just not my forte. That's how I've like always race indoor. It's just, I have such a hard time getting off the line. So one thing I wanted to be really cognizant of, because I feel like I just had these experiences where I was just stuck, was getting off the line well. So we got out. I felt like I was in a good position. I, you know, I'm not afraid to lead a pack, at least on the road. So um, I was totally fine with kind of being out in, I think Erica Kemp and I were sitting in second and third, most of that first mile. And just as we kind of approached the mile, I realized I felt really, really good. And I felt comfortable. You know, I was like, I feel like I could even pick it up and hold this for the next nine miles. And obviously, if you look at the live results, there was a, I hit a wall around mile seven or eight. So there was a bit of, you know, I felt like I could hold it, but I knew it was going to be really hot. But I just decided, hey, I'm feeling really good. What happens if I try to break this pack apart, see who comes with me? I really like to race, honestly. I don't really love the idea of like sitting around and kicking. Like I just, I think it's good for the sport if we go and give it our best effort the whole time, every time we're out there. So I just wanted to see what happened if I went for it. Like I just really wanted to get in there and race hard. Just like everyone predicted, Emily Sisson was fast off the line and almost immediately had a gap on the field that only grew as the race went on. So for the rest of the women, the race was for second, and Emma Grace did exactly what she'd set out to do. She went for it. She makes the turn. Emily Sisson here with a a sizable advantage already on the rest of the field. Looks like maybe that would be... uh, Emma Grace Hurley from the Atlanta Track Club behind Sisson there and kind of a solo chase pack and then a group of women uh, back behind there as well. But Sisson- Let's just, I was not intending to chase her. I realize that's what it looks like. And, but that, that, I mean, I just felt really good. And I think it's helpful to have someone in front of you. And so while I knew I wasn't in contact with her or you know, even really in the same caliber at all. It was just helpful to keep her in my sight as long as possible, just to have something to work towards. I always think it's easier to have something you're chasing rather than something you're afraid of. And as long as I could see her, I could focus more on her than thinking about like who's coming. I was honestly really surprised that no one came with me the entire race. I was kind of like, they're coming now. I mean, I remember passing the 10K mark and was like, all right, that's it. They're coming. And I thought the entire time that someone was going to just come blowing by me because honestly, it wasn't until I could see the finish line that I knew that I had like secured second. You know, I still can't believe that in a race of that caliber, like I was able to come away with the result that I did. To make this perfectly clear, Emma Grace soloed the entire race to earn that second place finish, which was her first podium spot at a national championship. And she wasn't the only one who was having a breakout day. At the finish line, Jessa Hansen, who got third, and I, uh, it was both of our first ever podium finishes at a championship, which was super exciting. And we had actually met at the 10 mile championships in October. And you know, we talked a little bit about the race, but it was also like a big 
kind of breakout race for both of us. And she had a few performances on the road later in the fall that were really, really good. But yeah, so we talked a little bit and she actually ended up totally by herself too. And so it was, we were just like, that was very odd. Like I didn't expect it to go like that. When we checked in with Emma Grace, it was a few days after the race and she had had a moment to reflect. Yeah. I mean, something we, that Amy and I have talked about a bit is like exploring my limits and, you know, just figuring out what those are. And I think we're still in a phase where we don't really know yet. And so, you know, I probably would have benefited from a little bit more patience in this one, but also that's part of learning what I can do right now. But other than that, I think it's one of those that I walked away from and just was happy with the result, happy with the day. I, you know, wanted to run a little bit faster than I did, but I also have to be aware that it was super, super hot. So yeah, I, I'm pretty satisfied with that one. A big congratulations to Emma Grace on her incredible second place finish at the national championships and her first podium. And thank you so much, Emma Grace, for coming on the podcast. I have no doubt that we will be hearing a lot from Emma Grace going forward. And next on Emma Grace's race calendar is a 5K in Atlanta. That will be followed by the Cherry Blossom 10-miler, which is the national championship 10-mile event this year. That happens at the beginning of April. And then she will be racing the BAA 5K, which happens just before the Boston Marathon. So we'll be really excited to have her here racing on the streets of Boston. If you, like me, want to keep up with her, you can find her on Instagram and Twitter. She is at Emma Grace Hurley. Of course, I will link to that in the show notes. And a huge congratulations to Emily Sisson. She is absolutely on fire, and she gave a stunning performance to become the 15K national champion for 2023. Next up for Emily Sisson is the London Marathon, which takes place on April 23rd. Rounding out the top 10, after Emily came Emma Grace, of course, and then Jessa Hansen, who runs for Puma. Jessa was followed by her teammates, Dakota Lindworm and Annie Frisbee. Both of them are training for the Boston Marathon. And then we had Ali Ostrander, who was coming back after a break from professional racing. It is really good to see her back and running so strong. She was followed by Sydney DeVore, who is also headed to Boston. And this was her first top 10 finish at a national championship event. So congratulations on that, Sydney. And then Bria Wetch, who is coming off of a fourth place finish at the national championship marathon that happened just last December and a fresh new half-marathon PR, which she ran at the Houston Half Marathon earlier this year in January. And a PR at the Houston Half Marathon that just took place in January. Carmen Graves came in ninth. She is best known for running the 3,000-meter steeplechase. And Rachel Kennedy rounded out the top 10. She has an interesting story. She just started racing in 2018 when she was in her early 30s. She is now racing elite level times in the marathon and other events. That rounds out our top 10. And that brings us to the end of this race report. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, I am Sheree Louise Turner, your host and producer. And I am wishing you speedy, joyful, healthy Strides forward. Women's running, running, running. Women's running, running stories. stories.